My name is Ola Hammarsten. I'm a professor and chief physician at clinical chemistry and responsible for the Troponin Clinic in Gothenburg, Sweden. I will visualize how risk of missing myocardial infarction interacts with troponin T levels and false positives. I will do this by examining baseline troponin T levels and the risk of myocardial infarction among patients with chest pain using a data set from our emergency ward at Sahlgrenska Hospital. The data set is composed of 8,076 male emergency room patients below 70 years of age with a chief complaint of chest pain and normal kidney function. 4% had myocardial infarction. This frequency plot shows baseline troponin T levels against two y-axis. Patients without myocardial infarction is shown in green and plotted against the left y-axis. Patients with myocardial infarction are shown in red and plotted against the right y-axis. The black vertical line is the rock-optimized cutoff in this cohort, a troponin T level of 10 nanograms per liter. The troponin T cutoff is according to current guidelines defined as the troponin T level that 99% of healthy individuals lie below, the 99th troponin T percentile. The 99th troponin T percentile is 14 nanograms per liter according to several well-done studies. Both rock optimized cutoffs and cutoffs based on healthy levels of troponin T are problematic. It is better to understand how to estimate the risk of myocardial infarction in your patient. Here I will describe two statistical tools to evaluate troponin T levels. I will then combine these tools in a single plot that allows me to visualize the risk of myocardial infarction and its cost in false positives. The first statistical tool describes what fraction of patients with myocardial infarction have troponin T levels below my patient's level. This is simply 1 minus sensitivity at the patient's troponin T level. That is, the fraction of patients with myocardial infarction presenting with troponin T levels below the actual patient's level. In our dataset, 1 minus sensitivity is 12% at 14 nanograms per liter. 3% at 5 nanograms per liter, and 61% at 40 nanograms per liter. This can be made into a plot. As you can see, the fraction of patients that have myocardial infarction and present below a given troponin T level increases almost linearly up to 30 to 50 nanograms per liter, and then levels out. The second statistical tool describes, at my patient's troponin T level, what is the risk of myocardial infarction? This is more complicated. Now we also need to involve the green chest pain patients without myocardial infarction in our calculations. To demonstrate, I plot patients with and without myocardial infarction on a single y-axis. In order to see the green plot of patients without myocardial infarction, we need to adjust the y-axis. And as I do so, you see the rise of the green false positive monster that you need to take into account when you describe the risk of myocardial infarction in your patients. In addition, in this situation, you want to know the risk of myocardial infarction at a specific troponin T level, not above or below your patient's level. A way to do this is to construct a range covering 14 nanograms per liter, for instance 12 to 15 nanograms per liter, and calculate the proportion of patients with myocardial infarction within this range. Predictive value among lookalikes, PAL. The principles of PAL is to use the fraction of patients with or without myocardial infarction within a troponin T range using delta sensitivity and delta specificity within this range. If the patient's troponin T level is within this range, the risk of myocardial infarction can be estimated. To adjust for myocardial infarction prevalence, calculations are adjusted using odds for not having myocardial infarction, the beta factor. The lower the myocardial infarction prevalence, the larger the beta factor. The result of PAL can be described as the number of false positive patients that you need to worry about to find one patient with myocardial infarction. Number needed to worry. 
Number needed to worry is 35 at 12 to 15 nanograms per liter and 116 at 5 to 8 nanograms per liter in this cohort. To be able to appreciate the relation between patients with and without myocardial infarction at 30 to 14 nanograms per liter, we need to adjust the y-axis once more and the number needed to worry is 5. You need to worry about and possibly admit 5 patients in order to find one patient with myocardial infarction within this troponin T range. If I plot the baseline troponin T levels and number needed to worry together, you see the relation between them. We can combine 1 minus sensitivity and number needed to worry at different baseline troponin T levels. This data can be plotted with troponin T levels on a second x-axis and shows the relation between baseline troponin T level, risk of missing myocardial infarction and number needed to worry. The fraction of false positives increases exponentially below 20 nanograms per liter, an effect of the green false positive monster. If you try to avoid missing patients with myocardial infarction using only the troponin T test, you will generate an exponentially increasing number of false positive in the process. As number needed to worry increases, we also need to factor in the risk of complications during hospital care. Studies by Martin Holtzmann's group at Karolinska Hospital in Stockholm, Sweden, indicate that chest pain patients with troponin T levels below 5 nanograms per liter and normal ECG stand a greater risk of myocardial infarction induced by coronary angiography and intervention than the risk of being sent home with a missed myocardial infarction. Lastly, number needed to worry around 14 nanograms per liter is different in cohorts with different myocardial infarction prevalence. This is shown in this simulator using our data set from the 8076 male chest pain patients. If the proportion without myocardial infarction increases, if for instance we were to analyze troponin T on everyone at the emergency ward, number needed to worry around 14 nanograms per liter goes up. On the other hand, if the proportion of patients with myocardial infarction was 15% instead of 4%, for instance, if we were to do the number needed to worry calculation on the APASH study cohort, number needed to worry at 14 nanograms per liter goes down from 36 to 12. The take home message is how you use the troponin T test affects its usability.